hologram. I mean, that would be maybe more cost effective. <laughs> yeah! Nick, thank you Friends. so much for your time. I know you well, didn't sleep last night. Did Is not. that because you were stressed for a show to drive or just because you're playing a home band show and you partied all night? Uh, a bit of both. I mean, I tried not to party too hard. Yeah. You know, I had to, we were doing our own driving on this tour. Okay. Uh, just such a short run, it didn't make sense to get a bus. Yeah. So, uh, uh, we finished late and we had to be uh, up early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. yeah, just didn't get any sleep, but uh, I'm stoked to play Toronto today. All right, now let's first actually look uh, a little bit in the future and look, sure. let's look outside of Unleash the Archers because yeah. once this run is over, you're not sitting still. Never. There's more First Fragment shows happening, Always. right? So tell us about that. Sure. Uh, yeah, so I finish up this tour on Sunday. Monday I drive home, <laughs> sleep in my own bed for one night, and then I'm in Montreal for rehearsal, and then I start my First Fragment tour on the Wednesday. Okay. Last time I saw you guys play was in August, Mad With Power, and in the crowd I saw First Fragment patches and shirts. Yes. Do you see, like, because let's be honest, Unleash the Archers is the band that is on that growth curve and you join them at the perfect time. Indeed I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you see that this has led into like a, a spillover effect into First Fragment as well? You're getting more traction there now? For sure, yeah. The, the Unleash the Archer fans are so supportive. They're always right. wondering what we're doing with all of our side projects. You know, they're really into sleepership with Andy too. Yeah. Uh, and they're just curious what we do and then they genuinely like the music so they come on support. I've had Unleash the Archer fans uh, all over the United States and Canada come to our shows. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Bring me some Sour Patch Kids, some peanut, of course. Some peanut M and M's, you know. <laughs> you know, put me up. Some people put me up, you know, because uh, first fragment were uh, sleeping on floors or right, 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 right. Dancing trailers. So. A different experience. A different experience. <laughs> are a bass player that is still allowed to be adventurous, let's call it. Uh, one of my good friends, the bass player of Accept, uh, Martin Montnick, uh, oh, yeah. tells me, as a bass player, there's the upper register mm -hmm. and there's the cash register. <laughs> and, you know, in many of the big bands, you know, you are a little bit restricted in what you are allowed to play. Right. But what is that like for you? Well, I mean, Alicia Archers, when I came in and started learning all the music, they had had some pretty talented bass players in the mm -hmm. past, so learning this stuff was a challenge. Uh, all the bass lines were really creative, so it gave me a wide berth to work with. Right. Uh, and the bands I had previously substituted for, I, I substituted for Black Crown Initiate, who is uh, the, the bass player is a six string bassist. Okay. So what I had lying around was a six string bass. So everything on the new Only She Archers album and most of their old songs I converted to kind of work with the six string bass. Okay. Uh, and so yeah, I mean, they're all whatever works, right? I'm allowed to get crazy and get up to the upper register. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As yeah. long as I don't step on anyone's toes and make a <laughs> clash. <laughs> okay. If you look back a little bit, and obviously just before you joined officially as well, um, the whole pandemic lockdown, looking back, with all the respect for everything that everybody went through, for Unleash the Archers, that was a blessing in disguise. For sure. Um, they, uh, like, uh, like, unlike many other bands, you guys were taking that, um, that time to interact with fans in a different way. You know, all of you are on Twitch all the time. Um, that online community, that Discord was built. Definitely. Um, and really accelerated, and people really took the time to dig into the music. The album it. came out, it wasn't postponed as much as the labels wanted to do it first, yes. and it worked out. Um, and then now you guys are reaping the war rewards of that. Next summer is going to be crazy for you guys Absolutely. with all these massive festivals, including Walken. Yes. Um, okay. In 10 years, when we look back, we're going to see that 2021 to 2024 is the time that everything changed for OCR. I think so. I mean, we, we did the best we could during the lockdown, like most fans did. We were just looking, what can we do? And we right. poured all of our energy into our fans. Yeah, yeah. And it really has come back. We've reaped the rewards. Oh, yeah. Our community is so supportive of us and each other. And they're just such diehard fans. You know, they were able to listen. Uh, to the album a lot and really connect with it. Yeah. Even though the label were advising the release label at the uh, record after. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so that of this album, a lot of people is just 
it's in their hearts. Oh yeah, yeah. for so, sure. Yeah, the time was well spent connecting with our, our fans. Yeah, yeah. Do you now, well, because you also then open the door to a way that people feel like the, the, the band are their friends and yeah. a part of your life. Yeah. The reality is also now that you can accelerate, can go tour, and when you're not touring with Unleash the Arches, you're touring with First Fragment. Of course. It's going to be harder and harder to maintain that. Yes. Unfortunately. Yeah. Do you already see that a little bit, that you've got like withdrawal system, uh, or, or symptoms that you're not on Twitch anymore all as much as you want to be and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, I mean, the, the, cry, the um, community is always growing bigger and bigger, and as communities grow bigger, it's harder to stay right. as tight-knit and connected. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, as far as withdrawals go, I mean, we're trying to spend as much time as our fans as possible because it, we've seen how much they give back. Yeah. We give to them and they give back to us. So it's something that we really try to prioritize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for sure, we, yeah, we try to stream as much as we can. We'll actually accelerate here for a second. Sure. Let me take my notes. Because we asked that. your fans, what are the key things we really need to learn about this person so we'll called see. Nick Miller? Are you ready for a rapid fire round? <laughs> my brain's not working rapid fire, but I'll do <laughs> So, first question, I think that I got most people asking me this question. What's up with the smile? smile? Why are you always happy? What are you hiding? What am I hiding? Uh, I want to think I try not to hide anything. You know, a lot of metal guys don't like to smile. And uh, I'm not about hiding that shit. So, uh, I don't know. My mom paid for braces and uh, she gave me a lovely smile. She has a lovely smile herself. So, we need to get her money's worth. Hey, there you go. Return on investment. Return on Fantastic. Investment. Um, what is your record high kick and has it led to personal injuries? Uh, no, no pulled groins. You know, I got a very strong gooch. I'm uh, very muscly. Uh, I don't do yoga. A lot, a lot of people assume I do yoga. As far as record goes, I've got it. I've noticed I can kick up to where my headstock is on my base. So that's the kind of the level I'm aiming for. But at um, Prog Power, I saw a photo of someone who had a higher high kick than I did. Oh. So this winter will be spent maybe doing some yoga. Good, good. It's a Stretches. competition amongst the band. Okay. Of course, of course, of course. Of course. With all the changes that the band has had with bass players, the question that I got a few times, are you real or are you a hologram? Hologram, I mean, that would be maybe more cost effective. <laughs> I'm the real deal, I'm the real deal, baby. Sorry for touching yeah, you. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> to the past no, no, it was great. Uh, am I the real deal? Yeah, I mean, they were lucky to find me. I think I'm the, I would uh, say so. yeah, I, I'm the bass player that has stuck around the longest with them, I think. Yeah, 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 okay. I, they, I met them in 2015, and I started playing for them in 2018. I've got the longest track record so far, so I'm, fingers crossed. Exactly. I saw you play with them in Toronto in 2018. Yes, lovely show. The, the another question I got was, how old were you when you picked up a guitar for the first time? And was it a guitar or bass guitar? Uh, yeah, I started on guitar. Uh, I started very young. Uh, I think I picked up my first guitar around eight years old. Kind of beatled around, started getting lessons not too long after that, and then I just stopped. I didn't play video games. I just played guitar all day. Okay. Is it true that if you were one of the founding members, a more appropriate name for the band would be Unleash the Parts? Ooh. I, I'm not too sure on the lore of the name. I've heard some mixed things about how they got the name and what would be a more appropriate name. But Unleash the Farts, that if there's anything harder to sell than Unleash the Archers, it might be Unleash the Farts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then final, the most important question of the day. How many licks does it take you to get to the center of a pizza? Well, see, I was born with Sasquatch genetics. So I have a very large tongue, and uh, it wouldn't take me long. There you go. Awesome. Nick, thank you for your time today. I look forward to the show, and I'm super excited for your first ride. So time. good to see you again, my friend. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it, and subscribe to the channel.